Let's do it. So what I'm doing here is I am taking two of the corner pieces and I lowered the opacity on them and I just moved the layers down a little bit. Uh, right now I'm going to find Shane's picture for the rear. Um, as you can see I had to resize it, resample it, and I had to enter the sizing and the width and all the dimensions for that which was 300 dpi dots per inch. That is the print standard for anything printed. Um, a low-res file is typically anywhere from like 120 or lower. Um, actually anything from 270 to 80 or lower. Um, but the desired is 300. So I added the bleed measurement and that's what the two guide or the four guidelines are for. The lighter blue, aqua blue. Um, now just adding back in. I made a clipping mask for the middle for the middle photo uh, and that's why it's in color versus everything else. Um, so now I'm going to find another photo. I just needed the logos now. Um, these are the sponsors that sponsor Shane. Uh, they also are very important when it comes to a hero card. Um, a lot of people thank their sponsors, which is very nice. Um, so the unconventional way of not having a sponsor, um, a sponsor's logo, and having to improvise and still high quality. Uh, I actually, as you can see, I just cropped it and pulled it right out of that image. Um, there's a little bit that I do to get rid of the wing panels in the logo from the picture, but other than that, you just saw exactly how I created that logo from scratch, pretty much. Um, and it looks, I mean, it looks just as nice as a PNG file that I use for all the other logos. So it will print, um, it will still print like that. It's just not the most ideal way to go about doing it, but if you need it and you're in a pinch, you're good to go. So anyway, I did that real quick. I actually took this S at the bottom uh, and duplicated it. I cut it out, copied and pasted it, and then pasted it right over top of the second S. So that also just helps in making the logo look, look less like it came on or came from right on the car. So Sometimes you have to improvise as to how you're going to get out of these situations. So now I'm just cleaning up the logo, making it look nicer, straightening it. Took in, I colored this in. So yeah, there we go. Resized it, moved it down. Um, now I'm just going to go and grab the other ones. These are PNGs, so they're a little bit easier to work with as far as where I stick them because they don't have a background to work with. They are a transparent background, which is so nice. Um, this other logo I couldn't find, um, so I had to take it off of his car as well. Uh, like I said, it's not the most ideal situation, but it's how you get by in a pinch. Um, and it also looks just like it would if it was actually done um, and I could have found it. So as you can see I'm just cutting out bits and pieces of the logo that I needed to get rid of uh, just because I didn't cut it out with such a straight edge so it was pretty sloppy cut um, just to get it out of the photo but that's why we do these kind of things where you can use any type of lasso tool. Here I'm using the magnetic one just because that's my preference. Uh, it just works a little bit better I think and you can control it a little bit more. Um, I do work off of a laptop. I work off of a MacBook Air so it does uh, it does take its toll when you're trying to move logos and stuff around without a mouse and cut stuff out without a mouse. The trackpad works but it doesn't work as well as it could. Um, 
So anyway, now we have all the logos on the card. Um, now it's just coming down to spacing and sizing. Um, when you do hero cards, you want to leave a bleed and you want to leave also a margin. So when your design is cut, you don't cut off any of the words. Um, this is probably one of the biggest things I've ever learned uh, and one of the most necessary things being a graphic designer that you pick up on. So now what I'm doing is still moving around logos, playing with playing with the blocks, and now I'm getting ready to add the accomplishments of Shane. Uh, these are also very beneficial to not only the drivers, but to their teams, and this is how they pick up sponsors. This is also how they show off their many accomplishments. Um, and, yeah, it's just... It's a lot nicer. Um, so, anyway, I added a gradient just because white would be really hard to show up on everything that's going on. So I'm going to use an orange box. I'm going to put the date in there. I used the Beebus font. Um, it's just a very, very natural all block font and it's so easy to read. Um, especially when you're dealing with these type of cards, you don't want something that's overly clustered. Um, or too busy. So the Beebus font, I've come to find out, works really good for text. Um, and it's one of my favorites. As you can see, accomplishments, it's such a pretty font. Uh, so anyway, working on the placement of these, I also italicized the text, uh, which isn't normal for the Beebus font. So now I'm copying it and adding in the rest of his accomplishments. Um, he did give me a ton to work with, which is good. Uh, it shows that he's good at what he does. Um, so it's always nice when you work with an outlaw team. Um, I did Brent Marks earlier in the year and their card was a little different because I didn't have any accomplishments to go off of. We could have added them, but that's not what they wanted. So we worked with what they wanted um, and a lot of my other cards have driver accomplishments. I offer a questionnaire that goes along with every one of my clients and they can tell me all of their accomplishments that they want on their card. So it does come in handy, um, just tricks and tricks and tips that I've learned throughout the process of doing hero cards for drivers. It just makes their life so much easier to have something that they can refer back to and see what their accomplishments really are um, in a listed format. So like I said, he had a lot of accomplishments, um, but it was fun. It was neat to try and fit them all on there and also to get them in a professional manner on there. And then now is time for the bio. As you can see, I'm still messing with the photo uh, in the background. Uh, now is time for the bio. So they actually provided me with a bio. I don't write my own um, unless if I charge for it. I can write your bio, but it it's better if you guys write it. Um, I'm not the best writer, but it helps when you have information that's clear, concise, and professional to go off of as well. Um, that makes it a lot easier to work with. So now I'm just messing around with the kerning, the spacing between letters, the length of the letters, the width, the height, uh, the space between the actual lines of text. Um, I also added an extra space just, just because it helps out when you're reading this font. This font is so close together. Um, the spaces in between the words are not as thick as normal fonts. So it just helped when I did this bio that I could add the extra space. So like you see, you can see me playing with the spacing between the letters and the words. And now I'm centering it again. And I'm very thorough when I go through and do all these.
Now, normally for what takes me this long to do this, you guys are seeing it in a very shortened period of time. Um, it takes me about two hours to do a hero card, roughly, give or take. Um, depends on the design. It depends on a bunch of things. Uh, it depends on how much information I have to work off of. But most of the time, it's around two, two, two and a half hours per side of a card. So, as you can see, this probably took me roughly an hour and a half. Um, but I also had to make sure all my spacing was correct, all of that. Uh, just make it uniform, um, which is what I'm doing now, putting the finishing touches on stuff. And just going back and trying to be more thorough. So now I'm selecting everything. I have to move it. Um, this is probably one of the nicest features I've come to find out that they put in the new CC software is that you can select multiple things by just clicking on them. And it looks like that wraps up how to design Shane Stewart's hero card. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and come back next time for more tips and tricks on photography and graphic design. See ya!